everyone. Uh, welcome back. Today we are going to do another uh, normal flora versus pathogen video. First, I want to give a shout out to the MedTech students in the Philippines at OLFU. Thank you so much for all your support and I hope you'll find this video helpful. Um, first, we're going to start with some pathogenic looking um, bacterial cultures. So this one, <laughs> This one is a urine culture, and this is the, uh, the sorry, the uh, blood auger plate, which is crazy because it doesn't even look red, right? Uh, so this is, this is what a blood auger plate would normally look like. Um, so this is a urine catheter um, specimen, and this is the McConkie auger plate as well. So if you look at these, seeing that it grows it's disgusting, right? Um, seeing that it grows on McConkie like this and look how wet it is. Oh my goodness. Um, and then what it looks like on the blood auger plate, it's green by the way. And so that is a very good indication um, along with the sliminess of possibly Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Um, so when we think about um, looking at a pathogen, normally, in uh, a urine, we would look for growth on the McConkie plate to indicate a GNR, so a gram-negative rod or a gram-negative bacilli. And then the blood auger plate um, should grow almost everything, but um, at the same time, we want to look to see if there's one population versus multiple populations of bacteria. So let's take a look at this one. This is also pathogenic, right? And we see that there is growth on the McConkie auger plate. This is a biplate, um, whereas these were not biplates. Um, <clears throat> so here we see the um, size of the, of the colony being large, right? It looks very wet also. You can see better on this one than on the other ones we just looked at um, that this uh, is a um, lactose fermenter because of the pink on here. Um, it's, it's very um, mucoidy looking. It um, most likely has a capsule because of that. Um, and then we have over here, we can't get any good colony um, count anyway because of how much is there. So that would be too numerous to count if you were trying to do a uh, colony count on this. So this is absolutely a pathogenic organism. Most likely we are looking at the um, family Enterobacteraceae. <clears throat> so let's take a second to talk about what the normal flora would be in the urinary tract area. So you are looking at the microbiota or the normal flora of the urethra, which would be coagulase negative staphylococcus, we call that CNS, um, except for staphylococcus saprophyticus. That's always considered pathogenic, um, and that's in sexually active females. Um, <clears throat> we also have viridins and non-hemolytic streptococcus, all right? none of which any of those would grow on McConkie because remember that's our GNR uh, plate. Then there's lactobacillus, which is a gram positive rod. We have diphtheroids, which would be Carini bacterium um, species within that. We have non-pathogenic uh, Neisseria um, in adult women. We have anaerobic cocci Propioni bacterium species in adult patients and commensal mycobacterium species and mycoplasma species. You may see a transient colonization with yeast in a woman, adult female, or Enterobacteraceae, um, but like I said, that's transient. And that could just, when we say transient, that just means a very short amount of time. So those are our normal um, microflora, and as you would know, or as you noted in those, most of them are not gram negative. So gram negative on there that we were talking about would have been like the Neisseria species, but that's a gram negative cocci. Um, 
whereas um, the McConkie auger is going to show gram negative rods, okay? So even if you had Neisseria on here, it would not grow on the McConkie. Let's look at another, um, another one. This is a urine catheter as well. I do not believe that it's the same one, um, but see, even on here, um, you could have, it, it looks like they took from this plate before they gave it to me. Um, so had there not been these smears here, we could do a colony count um, of this organism. And um, if you look very closely, what do you notice, class? <laughs> Does that look like normal bacteria? Hopefully you can see that. Do you see the little feet? That looks like yeast, all right? And you can also tell um, if it's yeast or not by the, the growth rate, okay? So this looks like it's a yeast infection and that's not, can, you know, that's not considered um, you know, we were saying that there might be a transient yeast infection, but um, if this person came into the hospital or because they, you know, were having trouble, this is not considered like a transient thing. And look how, look how many there are. So this would be considered clin clinically significant. All right, I'm going to take a quick picture of that. So the really nice feet on there so it doesn't have that perfectly smooth border. Okay, so now let's uh, move on to one more. Again, this looks like it's part of Enterobacter ACA. Um, we have a lactose fermenter on the McConkie auger plate. Um, we have a very indicative GNR um, colonies on this blood auger plate here because of that scallopy looking edge um, that's just very typical of them it looks um, nice and kind of wet but it is nothing <laughs> like the muco mucoidy looking um, colonies here all right so those are some pathogens um, in the urinary tract um, I have some urine cultures that um, are not necessarily considered um, pathogenic. So let's look at this one. This one looks like normal flora. There's not a whole lot there. Notice that there are different kinds of bacteria there. It looks about like two different kinds of bacteria. So this looks very indicative of normal flora that we just described, okay? There's no growth here on the McConkie auger plate, um, but that doesn't mean that it can't be pathogenic if it doesn't grow here, because the common pathogens um, that may not grow on here but would be considered pathogenic would be your Staphylococcus saprophyticus, as I just said, and Enterococcus. Um, and those uh, enterococcus is a cocci bacteria that is found in the gut. And anytime you're getting uh, gut normal flora into the urethra is not, is not a good thing. And if it's able to attach and ascend the urethra and then continue up the um, urinary tract, that's when we get a lot of problems and you can end up with kidney, uh, kidney infection. All right, let's look at this one too. This one is another urine culture, okay? And it also looks like normal flora, not really anything uh, to write home about. Um, I know in the videos uh, for the primary setup that in the urine I do, um, I do say to do the, the two gram stains, but really you don't do that in real life. It's, the reason I have um, my students do that is because the way that I have the, um, the lab set up in the learning management system that I need them to complete it before they move on in the lab. Um, but really, if you, if you came up with a colony on a urine, um, on a, a urine culture plate, a 24-hour plate, and it looked suspicious, that's when you would take 
and do your gram stain. So you would take the colonies that you would be suspicious about. So there, there is a little bit of growth here. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. Um, I don't have the gram stains from uh, these uh, cultures. So I'm, I'm kind of just speculating what they are, but this, you can see there's several different um, colonies and, and types of organisms here, and this most likely is normal flora. You can tell they did take, they did take um, uh, some colonies there to check it out on a gram stain. Let's see, we'll continue on with urines. Um, this one is a urine culture as well. It's a blood auger plate and McConkie auger plate. Um, again, we're seeing uh, normal flora here. Um, this looks this looks uh, most likely that it's not gram negative. Okay, there's a couple of different organisms. I don't know if you can see that. There's the larger white um, that looks like staph. It could be um, staph epidermidis just because they might have, you know, not pulled the skin away from um, while they were urinating. And it looks like uh, skin microflora. No growth on the McConkie auger plate. Okay. Um, this one is pretty much the same type of thing, but look at all, let's see if we can zoom in here. Look at all those little, little tiny pinprick colonies. Okay, so there's at least two different types of organisms here. And again, you can tell that they did take from this just to see what the growth was and see if it was pathogenic, <clears throat> but um, it shouldn't have been. Okay, let's see. We have, we have a couple of different wounds today. This one ended up being pasturella. It's a bite on a person's wrist. And this is what they did take from this. So <laughs> um, that's not, right there is not what a colony looks like. They, they took from this plate, um, see what I'm talking about, where it looks like that. That's not what a colony looks like. They swiped it with the loop. That's why it looks spread out like that. So a colony would be like up here, the circular type there. All right. That's nice, and it has like a, a wet kind of sheen to it. Okay, so this would have been um, an animal bite on the wrist. Pasturella is very common in an animal bite. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then we have an interesting situation. Um, I got these. <laughs> I got these from the hospital, um, and I put them in the refrigerator. And um, the refrigerator that I put them in, because we have two different refrigerators. The refrigerator I put it in um, froze the plates. So unfortunately, um, it has caused a problem <laughs> uh, because it froze. But we can still uh, glean some information from here. So this one is uh, from a deep wound in the left leg of a patient. So if you look here, it says, you know, you, whenever you have a wound, you always want to put where it is. Um, and if we're thinking a deep wound, we're thinking of, uh, the possibility of having a, uh, anaerobe, correct? So let's see if I have all of them there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I did not get an entire, um, anaerobic setup. Um, I got a blood auger plate, a chocolate auger plate. A McConkie auger plate, and remember this is the order that you would inoculate them. And then um, this PEA is from the anaerobic um, anaerobic setup. Okay, so here um, 
it's a wound it looks it it looks very pathogenic i mean it's taking over the plate um you have a beautiful i don't know that you can really see that with the camera but um there's this kind of sheen on the on the gray colonies and that's exactly what they did work up they did work up the gray ones um it is a pathogen i have no idea what it is though i did not get the report they didn't tell me um what it is however it did not grow did not grow on the mcconkey i'm sorry it's frozen um i'm thinking uh, it looks very staff-ish. <laughs> it grew on here as well. Um, and there looks like two different organisms on here. So if we were talking about this wound being um, maybe from an operation, which it probably is not, um, but we don't know. Um, you shouldn't really have any any growth <laughs> to begin with um, with a wound infection. If anything, um, you know, if it's a deep wound, you shouldn't be seeing much bacteria at all. And if you do, it might be skin uh, flora when it was collected. So the possibility of having organisms that are causing an infection in the wound especially a deep wound, um, you're thinking uh, that it could be a facultative anaerobe or an anaerobe. And so the main guys that we're looking at are Staphylococcus aureus. This would not um, necessarily be Staphylococcus aureus in the respect that there is no, um, there isn't the beta hemolysis. Um, beta hemolysis you would be able to see very easily um, and see through it because staph, staph aureus um, does that very quickly on the plate. So that doesn't really look like it's staph aureus, um, but it does look staphy. <laughs> um, there is the possibility of coagulase negative staph. That could be a causative uh, agent or pathogen. Um, it could be streptococcus pyogenes, but it's not because, again, no beta hemolysis on there. Um, other normal causes of a wound um, infection uh, would be um, Streptococcus anguinus um, group, and there are three different uh, species in there. And then there's microaerophilic Streptococcus, Enterococcus, Proteus, Morganella. The Proteus, Morganella, and the other Enterobacteriaceae would have shown up on the McConkie auger plate, so it's not it's not one of those either. Um, uh, enter, uh, sorry, Escherichia coli would have been one of them too. Pseudomonas, same thing. It would have shown up on here. Um, there's the possibility of Candida, which is a yeast, not um, not a bacteria. There's Bacteroides, Prevotella, Porphyromonas. Um, Fusobacterium, Clostridium, uh, Peptostreptococcus, and non-spore-forming uh, anaerobic uh, gram-positive rods. And so I did not get what it actually was. Um, let's look at all the plates, though. They didn't tell me what was reported out. Um, but it does look very staffy, honestly. Um, it, could, um, it could be something else, too, obviously. Um, so we had uh, almost maybe two different organisms on here, possibly. The larger colonies and then the, the smaller gray ones that we have seen on this, this one here. And then these, this is your PEA auger and that looks very similar to the one actually both of them look like they're there there's two of them two of them there so a facultative anaerobe can survive in the anaerobic um, 
primary setup. And so the different, the different uh, media that we use uh, would hinder uh, or enable um, different organisms. So like a lot of the plates within the anaerobic setup include uh, ingredients that would block a GNR from the Enterobacteraceae family because they um, are a common problem. As, as I'm sure you've heard from all of my other videos, they're, uh, they're one of the most prominent pathogens um, within the clinically significant micro um, department. Okay, and then this one I think was just the workup of the gray, the gray colony. So they made a purified culture and they probably put it on Maldi-Tov. I, I don't know what the result was. They didn't tell me. Um, and then we have a nasal swab on a blood auger plate and chocolate auger plate. So this, again, looks like staph. There's other, there's a couple of organisms there. Really gray ones look like staph. The whiter ones could be um, something else. And then there's, there might be three different organisms here because you have the, the white here, the little darker ones that are smaller, and then the gray, like that one right there. So they thought the same thing that I did, and they did um, an MRSA screen. So that would be methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Again, I don't have the result, um, but this is the growth on chocolate. A lot of organisms that grow on blood will grow on chocolate as well. All right, I hope you found that useful. And again, um, Thank you to my friends, shout out to my friends in the Philippines at OLFU um, University. And um, that's the med tech program over there. Uh, they, they have been having a lot of fun watching the videos and I'm really happy for their support. Thank you so much uh, for watching. And if you like this video, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified when um, ever I post another another video. Thank you so much. Have a great one. I'll see you next time. Bye.